Hey, what's up you amazing hackers? Welcome to my garden. Today I'm gonna tell you about why most companies suck at cybersecurity. And I really mean it. And that's not an offense to anybody because it's natural. One day, it's Friday, you're closing up shop. Everything seems normal. In fact, everything seems normal for the next couple of weeks even. Nothing out of the ordinary. Suddenly the IT guy rushes into your company three weeks later. And he says, we've been having a vulnerability for three weeks in our system everything's kind of foobar so what do we do well you're the you're the manager you have to you have to figure it out you say why didn't we know about this earlier why didn't we know about this sooner why such late discovery guys what causes this why us we are such a small business didn't we do testing to catch this why didn't our developers find this we have pull requests for this kind of stuff well, my friends, today we're going to talk about those questions. I'm going to read you from my little book here and I keep telling you how important it is to take notes and I really do mean it. So let's talk these issues. Let's say you have a filter. You have something to try and filter out the bad traffic. Well, you might have some um, exceptions that might apply to you or you might have to have some some things that aren't a default and you might have to change them but you're using the default settings well of course you think you're safe but it's a false sense of security and even if you have a filter even then it can still be bypassed so be on the lookout for that because let's talk about HTML entities for example in PHP that's a good cross-site scripting defense but the thing is if you use angular js and it's a vulnerable version you're still vulnerable to csti so watch out for that and then of course the most important one in my opinion logging and monitoring because if you're under attack the least you should do is know about it and probably as soon as possible now security is complex my friends let's not get that wrong Red teamers and blue teamers are training their whole lives for this stuff. They're training in complex scenarios. They keep learning new techniques as they evolve. So it's really varied also in the, in the subject matter that they touch upon. It's networking, it's web application security. Um, they're, they're looking at everything. They're looking at your logging and monitoring, which is something that, of course, I like this whole purple uh, team thing where and all the different colors where it's involving to you have developers that are also blue teamers or red teamers and that's a good thing i still think it is but i still think we should hire the proper security staff for that because of course training is going to be a super super important part of that but you can't be good at everything there's just too much to know it's a very complex world and sometimes developers lack the basics i want to throw blame or shade at anybody because i'm a developer myself still i'm developing a project for you guys and i hope to get that out soon but let's look at it this way so hackers like me we can sometimes develop but it's a problem for most of us to develop enterprise level applications that are also performant that are also secure even for some of us so we have to be really careful that we don't turn it the other way around either the, because for most developers and this is completely normal it's just too complex to learn there's too many factors that come into play and that's another thing of course hackers they hack for low hanging fruit if i'm a hacker and you're not gonna believe this possibly but there's a lot of 14 15 year old kids who just learned to hack great for them but they do it unethically and they do it for low-hanging fruit and real low-hanging fruit they make google dorks they go look for unshodan for vulnerable vulnerable servers and if you are not careful well it's really easy to make that slip up and to belong to become on that list of vulnerable servers so you really have to be careful with that as well don't make the assumption Oh, I'm just I'm just low level uh, enterprise. Why would they target me? They're not targeting you specifically. They're targeting mass scale vulnerabilities. And if you belong to them on accident, well, then you're kind of screwed. When an attack happens, you kind of need to act fast. So that's why I say logging and monitoring is so important. 
it's one of the most important things to actually find out about the vulnerability while it's happening so that you can act fast and you can if need be unplug the freaking internet cable if it's a last resort it's super important that you don't let the hackers roam free on your network because they can steal customer data they might be in the process of stealing customer data and if you unplug your network cable you kind of stop that now some other points that i want to make as a developer um, and as a software tester as a qa engineer i've seen that integration points are often a weakness it's because you have one team making some one thing, then you have another team making another thing, and documentation is often lacking, and you see that the teams don't communicate properly. So that can cause issues, of course, and especially in the field of security, we have to be careful with undiscovered exploits. We have to do a threat model, and then we have to act accordingly. Also, regression testing is really hard because we have these two week release cycles with Agile, two weeks to two months of course and it's it's a you have to be really careful with that because if you don't have your test automation in order your test pyramid respected then you're gonna have a problem with that release cycle because your testers are not going to be able to catch up if they have to retest everything manually every single release cycle then another thing is that according to me sorry about that gonna reposition myself real quickly so the dtap Street. The DTAP street is not followed properly often. What is a DTAP, you might be wondering? That's development, testing, acceptance, and production. Now you have variables of this, of course. You have um, UAT is also what the acceptance is sometimes called. Uh, it depends. Sometimes your development and testing are one environment. But the thing is, if you put out a vulnerability fix in production, you have to back propagate that to all of your environments because otherwise if you next time you make a release it's just going to overwrite those security fixes in production and you're still going to have the same problem you think you're safe because you think it's patched but it's really not now lack of documentation is making that regression testing even harder i know it's not easy to keep a good wiki to write good documentation but it is really essential if you later on want to make a fix or if you want to make a new feature on top of an old one if you want to restructure an old feature you always need good documentation misconfigurations also often give a false sense of security because it's really easy to do and especially in these days where we're talking about a lot of work from home you're gonna have straights open that aren't normally open and those can be exploited by developers as well, uh, sorry, by hackers, of course, as well. That is something that you really have to be careful about because work from home is becoming ever more prevalent. A stupid example is those unsecured Zoom calls that we had a while back where everybody could just drop in because people didn't really know how to secure their Zoom call. Of course, security, in my opinion, it has to be by design. That's also something a lot of people do wrong. They don't take it into their initial designs, which is something that's really important because your architecture needs to be safe. Otherwise, you're going to be building an application on top of it that might be perfectly safe. But if your full architecture can follow, then you still have a problem. Your stack, your application stack is going to run into limitations later on. Now, the last thing that I have here is that secure coding design patterns aren't often followed. Not a lot of people know what they are. If you're a developer, I, I encourage you to look them up. It's secure coding patterns. And it's really, for my opinion, it's really important that we adhere to those very, very stringently. Because it only takes one mistake and these security design patterns can really help us prevent those. They're not going to stop them completely, but every layer of security that we have extra is a good one. Now, what do you guys think is one of the most important reasons that often we see these big enterprises getting hacked that are not secure? Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, amazing hacker.